And good day. This is the Eye of the Storm podcast with the big picture technical update for the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, the 30-year bond and the 10-year note, gold, and the dollar index. And I am recording today on Sunday, October the 29th at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific standard time. I'm going to start here with the SPX. And I have spent a lot of time on my charts over this weekend. And what continues to just ring true to me is that we are in the midst of a larger third wave, an intermediate degree, third wave down. And within that, we're in a minor third wave down. And when I look at the weekly chart and I see how much ground needs to be covered within these waves, I have to start to believe that it's like we are not even close to being done and that things are likely going to escalate or accelerate one more time or more than, than one more time. And what I mean by that is like when I'm looking at the hourly chart, I'm looking at the four hour chart. These are sizable moves. Now we can see them on a weekly basis. They're sizable moves. But then I'm looking to see, well, where does support for the minor third wave come in at 38.68 down to 38.29? That's just for the minor third wave. Where does it really now come in for the intermediate third wave? If this minor third is going to come down to here, the intermediate third is likely going to break even lower, closer to 3,500. And now we're back down towards getting below that the 3,491 low via the SPX. So this is in the cash market. So we are going to be getting below there, but that may be just going to be completing the intermediate third. And what also continues to ring through my mind is that Elliot told us that the third waves are most often the longest and the strongest. Therefore, in order to really achieve that status, we've not seen the power behind these third waves kick in yet. Now, unfortunately, it's to the downside. And we're working through a period where we have earnings reports coming out, and the companies continue to show that our economy is definitely robust, but it is not truly going to be able to mask or cover the problems that the economy is running into in terms of inflation, in terms of higher interest rates, and why those rates, even though we might get a pause, in fact, we're pretty much guaranteed a pause at this November meeting. It would be a surprise. And that surprise, should they raise the rate, even a quarter of a basis point, if they raise the rate 25 basis points come next Wednesday, this market is going to tank like there was no tomorrow. And what it does, folks, is it just kind of reinforces what's really going on behind the scenes. The U.S. and our Treasury Department and the government, because of, uh, I can only say, bad policy in previous administrations, we now continue to look at going, like, well, you know, the economy's great. This is great. That's great. They're going to have to start to lower those rates. Inflation's under control. No, don't be fooled. It's not. Because the benefit of what we've seen in these bad policies and these bad uh, tax breaks that were given in the George Bush, George W. Bush administration and the Trump administration were not favorable to anybody who sits below the 1%. And that's the truth. Now, that doesn't speak evil. That doesn't speak negative. That's just plain truth. And if we can accept that, then we're going to have to go down and realize what's happening as the unions get new deals, the auto workers get new deals. How does that filter in? 
What does that do? When we start to see the break happening, that corporations aren't going to get the tax breaks and the benefit of these tax breaks that they demand and that they want. Yeah, they're continuing to make money, folks, but it's not flowing down that ladder to where we all get that benefit. So when it gets that small, the economy gets out of control. Then we, as the in that lower rung, in, in, in the 99%, have to really figure out how are we going to pay for all this because we're not getting that trickle down. So again, the problems continue to increase. One more that's coming up. The funding needs of the federal government or of the United States right now are very, very large. Now, last time we had a major 30 year auction, it was dismal. We did not get the participation on an international level that our country and that our treasury department, that these auctions depend on. We need that robust participation from other countries from other sovereign funds and they've got to be able to come in and be be willing to do it at the interest rate that the fed is trying to put down and when they can't they have to go up if if sovereign funds or others are not willing to lend the u.s government or the federal reserve or the treasury department of the US government, money. They're not willing to lend money at the rate that, that the, the, the treasury is trying to put it out at. That produces a dismal turnout or a dismal result for trying to raise these funds. And therefore, then the government can't meet its obligations and keeping us all going, keeping this all going, regardless of What's happening in Amazon, in Google, and all of these big, big, big tech companies? Now, we're beginning to see <clears throat> that they're reporting decent earnings, and yet the, the, they don't sustain these, oh, yeah, rallies. We're going to rally. We're going to go. Case in point, Meta. Meta's earnings were not bad. Meta had great, you know, hey, we're making money on, on advertising, on, on Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. We're doing great. We have great prospects for, for Metaverse. Now, what happened? The initial was oh, every algorithm that we have came in and bought that stock up to $316 on the day they reported. Came back down to $309. But when by the time the market opened, in the globex of that day, which it had previously in our regular close, our RTH on that particular day, the day they released those earnings, the market uh, for, for Meta closed at 299. Then earnings come out, they run it up to 316, bring it back to 309. So now we're just kind of thinking that, oh, gee, when globex restarts, it should open 309. It opened at 288, down another $10 from where it closed in the ATH. Now, that was a signal, not that the, that Meta's earnings weren't stellar. It was the belief that it's going to be able to continue. It's a belief that, that Meta is not going to escape higher interest rates, is not going to escape the fact that, that there's really underlying problems that we need to factor in. So, what, so I, you're going to hear me term this often as like breaking the status quo. The status quo, oh yeah, it's just wash, rinse, repeat, wash, rinse, repeat. You know, they're going to continue to make great earnings. You got to continue to buy the stock. Okay, fine, do so. Did it work out for you? So now we've got Apple, the largest corporation that we got, the the highest, right? We're up there, two, two point something trillion in value. What's going to happen there? Because their products don't get lower in, in, you know, when the new product comes out. Oh, by the way, we're going to lower the price? Uh-uh. Apple, Apple iPhone 15 for the top of the line is $2,000. $2,000. Now, is it worth it? I, I don't know. 
But how many people are going to rush out and spend that money? When we do have, you know, China kind of coming in with its problems. So so here's the gig. Now they're going to go, they're looking at, well, we're going to determine their earnings on how they handle China. And is it going to be able to be res resolved by the business that we're now doing in India? So is India going to save Apple now? Not the U.S., not us retail customers here. We're looking for retail customers in India to jump and buy the iPhone. We're looking for retail customers in China to jump and buy the iPhone and carry carry the company forward. I'm like, I find it all very strange. Granted, it's a it's a huge international company. But we continue to follow what others are saying and that, oh yeah, this is great. And and this is just something that I find amazing. How we have a lot of brokerage houses that are sticking to their higher price ranges that they're dictating for these stocks. Now, I'm coming back here and I'm looking at this chart. And I'm taking all that going like, well, you know, if I'm looking for this larger correction, and this is where I get I get a lot of uh, pushback from other people, from, from subscribers and from people that follow my work. Oh, no, no. You're really doing a disservice because you're not acknowledging that this is a bottom and that we're going to go up. Really, really. So now we're so, so I'm not acknowledging that. But at the same time, are you that are acknowledging that you think this is a bottom based on the earnings of seven huge companies that's going to carry it all forward, that's going to bring down interest rates in and of itself? when they don't pay their fair share of taxes, which is going to provide the federal government with the money it needs to keep us all running. Figure this one out, folks. Two previous administrations gave massive tax breaks to corporations and the 1%. Huge. We're not making the money. The government isn't collecting the fair share of taxes. And they're coming after us, the little guy, to pay to pay our measly. Meanwhile, companies like Apple, Amazon, Google, Tesla, et cetera, et cetera, continue to pull billions of dollars, Google, billions of dollars each quarter. But we gave them huge tax breaks. So therefore, who suffers? The federal government. The government that needs the money to run the country, to build the infrastructure, to provide services of the people. Okay, so now you want to go back to this chart? Because the government still has to, the Treasury still has to have these auctions. They still need to borrow money to make ends meet. Let's go back to that chart. So if that's a bottom. What's going to catalyst drive it higher? Oh, that this company is making all this money, but they're not contributing their fair share on a tax basis that's going to keep the government running? So what do we do? Shut down the government? Who's going to pay for everything? It just doesn't fit all together. So what I see coming is something that's really going to be a shock that we're going to drop and we're going to drop. Now, we saw little one-line headlines come out that the SPX or the S&P and the NASDAQ are in corrections, officially now in corrections. I'm like, okay, we've been in a correction. So this whole claim of a bull market was nonsense. Did not fit, did not work. This was not a bull market or the start of a bull market. Yeah, you could say it was because look, it ran and we went pretty high and we were very strong, but then suddenly it stopped. Reality set in and now we're dropping and the excess will come out. So when I look at this, I'm looking at this going like, well, if we're in this third, which is the longest and the strongest, and we're we're battling 4,100 in the SPX. Oh, we're going to break that. We're going to break it. Or we're going to just keep the flying. Or we're going to go back to 42. And is that enough? We dropped from this high at 46 down to close to 41. Oh, isn't that enough? So this has got to be a bottom. Why? Well, because 
we need to run back up now because we're still supposedly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What happens when we break 4,100? What happens if we come down on a weekly chart and break that weekly 200 simple moving average at 3,940? We broke last week the 50 and the 100 simple moving average, which was sitting about 4,180, and we dropped. We, we really dropped strongly on that break. So we're, I believe we're going to continue to drop, folks. Now, that's the weekly is telling me that. But if I, and if I start to come down, now I'm going to come down to the daily, and we're going to open that up to see, well, where are we within this? These are pretty strong. But I'm thinking I was counting this. It's like, boy, that's not right. One, two, and we're in the three, of the three, of the three, very possibly. And if that's the case, we're going to break 4068. And where are we headed? Down here. Now, I can start to continue to put some additional. If I could bring it down and let's take it to the four-hour chart. And let's open up that four-hour chart and see, well, where are we inside of all of this? One, two, three, four, maybe. Is this the fact? Maybe. But then again, is it just wave one? minute wave one of minor wave three these pot these are the possibilities that i'm rolling with at the moment so i'm not really labeling these but i'm looking at the larger the larger fibs and that's where i'm coming up with at least 4068 and that might just be minute wave one of minor wave three and then we will put in a second wave. And that second wave should be pretty powerful. But understand, it's corrective of a, in an ongoing down cycle. So we'll be able to work it out. And I'm, it will be tradable. But if you're investing and you're on a long-term view, I, I can't see the argument that the market's just going to bottom and just rally, 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 and go to new highs. So understand that you really got to have a strong catalyst. And it has to be stronger than the Fed <clears throat> is going to pause in November or at the end of the next week, and then pause again in December. And then interest rates are just going to start coming down in 2024. There's no way that that can be supported right now. Because I'm even looking at the bond market, which I'm going to do here, and it's just not coming through. So let's just look at the technicals and what I see coming. I've given what, what, I, what I'm feeling is behind all of this. Now, let me just get to this because I, I don't want to spend the next hour just going over, you know, what's wrong with things. Let's just talk about the technicals. I do believe that we're going to continue to go down. If I come back down and I'm now going to look at the one hour chart, then I think that we probably have one, two, or three, four. And then we've got this one, two, three, four coming into a fifth, but I don't think it's done yet. Now, fifth of what? Like I just said, the, maybe the fifth of only minute wave one of minor wave three. Regardless, if that is going to be, and I have to build my fibs, my Fibonacci retracements are going to be from that high to wherever this bottoms. And that's going to tell me now, right out of the gate, you got the 20 and then you got the 50 and then we got the 100 sitting up there. If this is going to be a fourth wave of some sort, then possibly that's also going to be an area where a bounce is going to come up into. That's just, you know, what Elliot was te has taught us over the years. So again, I'm going to let it bottom before I'm going to be ready to turn it up. And I think this is where we kind of come in. I do think that they come in and they break 4,100. And I do think that it's likely going to happen uh, tomorrow. We don't have uh, um, Apple's earnings until Thursday on the 2nd. But we have a lot in between. But the, that's the last of the big ones. And then we have... We have um, NVIDIA out in mid-November. So again, you know, 
I think what we're going to start to see is a decay and a breakdown of the market. So I'm looking for these largest support areas to begin to show up and the market reaches down to them. Now I'm going to back out to that weekly chart just to show that we have, I'm going to open this up. Oops, not that, open this up. And what I started looking at was here. And when it came down, the last time it came down and what, you know, a C wave, which it can resemble a third wave. Now, here it was on an intermediate degree, but these were minor degree. So here's your minor degree. One, two, here was the third. Bam, bam, bam. And a weekly, those are huge moves. And if, in fact, the third was, um, let's just say, this is 35.84. And it started at 38, excuse me, started at 41. So it was almost 600 points. 600 points and if i'm thinking here we have 43 600 points wow 500 takes us down to here 600 takes us a little bit lower if we're going to do comparisons to what the market is capable of doing well it is then we get a bounce and then we come down and then we sit down into here and that finishes minor and maybe even intermediate depends on how deep we can get intermediate three is going to finish maybe down here that's my guess now. And then we get an intermediate wave four, and then we get an intermediate wave five, and then we're looking here. 3,000, 2980, those numbers that we've all rolled around with. So again, I can bring this in. Let me bring it down, and let's just open this up to see, well, what else can I really fit in here? If we're thinking that I can put in a few... If that's going to be a one and this is a four, which I don't think it is, but let's just say here we have some additional 4091 and then it gets down to 3988. So, but I think it just becomes too difficult and I'm going to have to break it down even more and come down to here. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. Okay. So same deal. Okay, let's try that one more time. Bring it here. And if this is the four, same deal. 39.88. Right? So where are we in here? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. That brings us closer to 40.68, I'm sure. But we can do it again. Now, I'm not going to leave these up because it just is too unclear. And right now, this would be so small. And I'd have to open this up, and I'm going to have to edit, allow that out, that out, and the 1618, that out, because they don't really exist. And what we're really looking at, oops, is 2618 again. So we're, we're really wrapping ourselves around 4068, because here we have 40. Right down here, 4065. So 68, 65. And then we got that twice. So we got it coming in, and it is more fitting 4091 down to 4065. And that's breaking it all down to the hourly chart. And then we get we get a bounce. Now that's basis the cash. I'm gonna go over to the ES. They're gonna come in pretty much the same. So now I'm gonna go back up and let's start building here and our cash for what we think the market can do, or at least where we should start finding our larger support areas. So this would be minor three, minor three, hundred percent. And let me just put this into perspective because 618 is already gone. And that's not gonna happen, but we have the hundred percent and as you can, as I say all the time, I'm looking for more. So we have it, 465. We have it coming down to the next level, 40, 3840. Could the market drop 200 over two days? Yeah, it really could. We could get down there. That isn't the most impossible thing to do. Now we're going to add one more that we have the, if these are the minutes. 
and I'm going to leave those in the place, then we're already past. So the minute three mm -mm, just is out of proportion. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to take out all of these. And we got to look at these two. Because the minute one was like, so we have 4117, which we were jumping into, and then we have 4065, so we're back out to there. So that's the second 4065 that I got. All right, I had one from here. Now I got another one. And that's just on this minute third. So I still think we're, we're inside this minute three. All right, then I got one more again put in there. Let's go down one more. Let's go down to the hourly chart. And we're going to take a look at this has got to come over all the way to here. It's way off. And again, it's not going to give us much of an accurate picture because Minuet Wave 1 was so small. So, but I'll put it in. And let's see what we can come up with. And then bring it all the way down to here. And you're going to see it just doesn't fit. So here again. I take off all of these because they've all been surpassed and I put in these, which are the next two up and look where we are. So even that only brings us down to that 40, 41, 17. So on the, on the minuet level, this one doesn't work. This one's already been surpassed. So now we got to come down inside this fifth wave and that's where it starts to get really funky because this gets... This was hard, and I don't think it's over. If they bring it up, well then, then we'll rearrange. I just do not think we're bottoming and we're going to turn. If you're a day trader, yeah, there's some, there'll be, both sides will be playable. But on a larger picture, mm -mm, I don't think downside is even close to being done. So even for tomorrow, I, I think, yeah, we might get a bounce, but then we're going to find resistance here. 4165, 4176, 4216. And I think that really will contain until we get additional downside. But who knows? We might get that straight out of the out of the gate with Globex this afternoon. So I'm going to go back over now. Let's take a look at the NDX. The NDX is going to tell us the same picture. I'm not going to fill in the blank about all of the things with 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 um what we're seeing, but I am going to start out on my larger picture and let's open it up just a little bit and here again here we have the same thing one two one two if this is the third yeah we're off to a great start and we've had some pretty strong you know weeks of downside like this one 47 you know 14,787 all the way down that was that was almost an 800 point week a 700 point week those are pretty big moves. But now look at it in the context of the whole move that we're looking for. We're looking for 30, 30, 13,500 to 13,400 for this to come in on the minor. If, if. Now, I'm going to bring it back. Let's take a look at the daily picture. Let's open that up. Where are we? One, two, three, four. Mm, one. One, two, three, four, five, one, minute wave one of minor three. So again, the cash market is really kind of signaling that. And so can the the uh, futures market be selling us the same thing, to be honest with you. And here we are coming down into it. Let's open this up on the daily. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe we got one more. I mean, when I look at my hourlies and stuff, maybe one more down. To finish up minute wave one, minute, uh, excuse me, this is minute one and two on there. But so if this is in here, then it's just going to be minuet wave one of minute wave three. Now, back out on the NDX, it's a lot different. And I might have to make my adjustments. Right? One, two. And then I've got, let's go back out. So this low minor and December. Okay, let me go back over to the Anku and see what I got going on. That's August. This is September. So in essence, I've got this, this is minor wave one. 
in the cash market. That's interesting. How does that happen? Huh. Oh, I see. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to go back over to the MQ. Instead of making these, these are intermediate, and then these would be the minor. And so if I, I moved them here thinking that the whole thing was going to be so much bigger, but I'm going to leave them as um, the intermediates for right now. And I will fix that in terms of, and then these are the um, minor. And so, and then what we got coming in, and I will fix it, but I trust me, I'm going to do it and not waste our time now. So we've still got intermediate, minor, and this could be just minute wave one, bringing it down to the four hour chart, minute wave one. And that's kind of what I'm looking at. So minute wave one of minor three of intermediate three. And I could do these very quickly so that at least we're not gonna be confused here. And I apologize, I thought I had done that by putting them back. Sometimes I don't catch myself. I run through a lot of different things uh, when I'm alone and then forget sometimes to put them back so that I'm consistent across the board. So that's what I was looking at, one of my iterations. And I just charted out, as you can see, I do it all by hand. I just chart it out and take a look at it. So I'm going to change that back. Okay. So again, <clears throat> one, two, yeah, come on, where's my mouse? So one, two, three, four, and this would be a five, maybe needing one more little low. So here we have the minor. If we're doing a minute, and what we might be looking for, and minute wave one does not necessarily need to come all the way down to there, but we're getting pretty far, which is going to tell you that we're going to come further than there. That's my point. My point is, it's like I'm thinking that, you know, that the waves are not, they have a lot more to go. So I don't want to count too fast, you know, that we really need to put more space in between, that this is not a minute finishing a minute, finishing a minor third. That there's that it that it's going to be much larger. So if I'm going to do that and I'm just looking for where that can come in, well, we got 3962 down there. That would be, you know, we're wave five of one of, of minute wave one can start to come in. That's my point. And that's already been dealt with. So let's put this one in. So now you can see 30, 13,962, 13,585. And that just gives us minute wave one of minor wave three. I think in here. Now we just need to get below this 14,140. Let's see, what is that number? 14,140. And so it could be, you know, just underneath all of that. And again, we'll see. But that would be the fib that goes along to this. So again, we lower. I think we move lower in all the equity markets before we even get a bounce. Before we get a bounce, and we'll be looking at you know Wednesday's decision. Now, granted, algorithms are in control. Algorithms are pre-programmed. Algorithms will scour the news and take a snapshot of whatever the wording is and run with it. Doesn't mean it's correct. If you're a day trader, it provides a lot of opportunity, but doesn't mean it's correct. It doesn't mean, oh, look, the market's responding bullishly. It's like, no, an algorithm is, and they can change their mind. And we're seeing that with earnings as well. Run it up and run it right back down. We see it with our, our economic data. Run it up or run it down or run it down and then buy it back. So it gets crazy. And I think we just need to follow uh, what we have in terms of where our FIB levels are, where different things are. And the bigger picture continues to suggest lower. All right. 
So moving average wise, we're still in line, but you can see on the daily, the NASDAQ, the future came in and broke and retook the 200 simple moving average, which sits at 14,299. So we did close below it. Now that would suggest we continue lower. We started, but they brought it back up on Friday. And now they closed it back below. So I'm looking for it to continue lower, put in a low and then rally again, but in a different wave pattern. All right, so over there, let's go over to the bond market. Bond market continues also to present its challenges. Now, what, again, I, I know I had presented last time where I'm th I was thinking that the um, intermediate wave A was complete. Well, then I, I, but I've always wrestled with the fact that moving forward, it just, yes, these rallies, again, this is my daily chart. These rallies have been strong down here, coming right up the low, boom, rally it up, through, you know, two, two points or so, but then drive it lower and then rally it back and then drive it lower. So I think that what we got going on is just how there, there are a lot of institutions. There are a lot of traders. It's like, yep, I I'll go grab that yield. So they race in and they buy it because they're just trying to book the yield. And I think what, what then happens outside of that is that if the next 30 year auction, which is coming up, coming up, um, I think next week or the week after. And it's as it's and and if it's as seriously bad as the last month was, you know, the government's gonna the Treasury Department's gonna have problems. The market's gonna have problems. We're gonna see another slam dunk. This, I believe, was the reaction to a an abysmal 30-year auction. And this was all October. So now we got November's. So you're going to do it again. So I've, I've taken that all away, the fives, the fives. And I went back to a count that I've actually held as an alternate, but I did present it where the possibility that this low maybe only completed minute wave three of minor wave five down. And so what we have, we have that support at 106.23. That's pretty, I think that's pretty strong. The current low is 10704. So we get another drop and then maybe a finishing rally. Or this, well, let me go down so we can see it. I'm going to go down to the 30. Or this is, this is the four. One, two, three, another four. And we're going to come down to five, get to there. Finish that five. And the minute third, and do another four, and still do another five, much larger. So again, back out to my bigger picture. What does that suggest for the bond market? We may get ourselves down to 104 or as low as 102. I will be able to fill in these gaps. Should this actually be the case, and we're only finishing a, a minute third, then we get a four, we'll have more fibs coming down. All of these will be filled in, these levels. We have much higher for the minor, right? Which is still in place. Minor four hasn't moved. A 1.618, I mean, yes, folks, 85. That's what the FIB shows us. Am I saying that that's where, that's where the bond is going? No, I'm not. But I don't know. They're talking seriousness. They're talking serious trouble. On, because of fiscal policy, because of, of the debt that the government sits with and how that debt needs to be serviced and how that debt continues to grow because of the needs of the government. So, yep, yep, I get it that the politicians are screaming, we've got to cut spending. No crap, but you've got to take back those tax breaks. We have to spend because we're not receiving so what is, what is the answer from 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 our, our elected representatives? Their answer is, well, we're just going to you know 
take away the services from the people that need it because they're not a part of the 1% and they're not a part of the corp. Okay, that's not going to work. But that's, you know, politics. We're not going to get political. So again, it's, it's, it's something that, yes, I get it. Spending needs to be reduced. But our roads need to be improved. Our infrastructure needs to be improved. Those have all been put into motion. But yeah, GDP, okay, they want to they want to go like, wow, did you see that gain? And I say, wow, did you see that gain as well? But is it inflationary or is it deflationary? How is it really going to affect interest rates? Because again, the tax base has dwindled. And the, and the corporations that are making that sizable chunks of money are not paying what we would consider their fair share in taxes. And therefore, that includes all of us, folks. You can go rant and rave all you want about this, this, and that, and about our great corporations. Yep, they are. But they need to pay their fair share in taxes because we all need to move along. We all need to participate in this robust economy. So again, I'm now back to leaving open the strong potential that again, we're going to do another nosedive. See, this is what I see, you know, when they do stuff like that, that was a great rally. Then they declined and they brought it back, but not as all in one spell swoop. So maybe it just is an A, B, and we'll get one more. Maybe we get back up to 110. An A, B, C, maybe even a little bit higher. And then we get that four done. And then we come flying back down again. Now that's the 30 year over in the 10 year note. And you know what that really spells? It spells that, that these, that the uh, yields go right above, back above 5%. 30 year back about five, maybe five and a quarter. Five and a quarter towards, because of the next auction or even higher. And the 10-year note, we got the same type of a deal, right? If I'm going to move this out, let's put it on the daily. And this is only the three. And that's saying that we're, that the five is in, which I haven't. So I kind of got this a little bit ahead of the game. But I'm going to bring it down, put it under here. That if we got a five, probably, and that's, that's those beautiful rallies off of the last low that I thought could have completed it all. But that would just... The, in my mind, for that to really hold true, we need to just, we should be back above 107, pretty lickety split, and we didn't. We're pausing, we're getting in trouble. Because the market, you know, you're a bond trader. Well, bond traders know when the next auction's coming and they know what the needs of the government are and they know that the last 10 year wasn't as great as we all thought. But they still want to move in and grab yield to protect them should we rally. Right, you want to buy the bond now, and you're grabbing that yield. And if it goes up, bond price, you're making money. Anyway, so again, we still run the risk that we could get up to maybe 107, 30, and then we drop again. This needs to come off, and that's on this one. So again, on the 1.618. So I could take those off because this would be the minor, the minor fifth is 101. And then here we go, one, two, three. So even the minute third, where it can come into it, 103. What's our low so far? 105. So we could have a, a nice, a, a strong dump in the 10-year note. All right, just moving right along here. Gold. And I told you last time that gold, we're going to start with here in the daily chart, gold is in the beginning phases of a minor fifth wave, or at least a fifth wave, um, up what it is going to be on these larger uh, numbers. Could be intermediate, I'm not sure, but I'm just saying it is a fifth. My count does suggest it's a fifth. Of what degree to be determined? What's going to happen with that? is that it's going to continue. And here are our fibs. So next in line is 2061. And we know that that fifth wave should be breaking above 
the high of the third, which is 2089, basis the December contract, we have this high at 20, 2145. So definitely above there. And then above here, which is 2220, again, December contract. If I pull this out and I look at it on my weekly chart, you've got 2089. So here we are, 2086. So 2089 against this measurement still fits. Against 2240, which was the December contract, does not fit. So again, it's the contract and, and the role and the pricing and how I'm going to meld it in. And therefore, I really would go over to a cash, a cash gold chart. And I'll try to pull that up to bring it in because that's what's going to be important. But on a futures basis, I'm definitely looking for it to break 2061 and then 2089 as it works its way up to 2100. And eventually, right, 100% for wave five. Hmm. I think that's a good little resting point, but I think 2089 maybe gets above it and shows its guts and then pulls back and then rallies again. So I do see 22 above 2200. I do see in we still have potential, potential that this is a much larger up move in gold than people are actually banking on i mean we this can go it has plenty of upside potential i mean i have to work out those fibs and just put them together to show you know wave one to wave four and where wave five could go but it's it's up there it's way up there and so if i go out this far you know what we're looking at is from here to here, to here. And I can just, I'm just going to put that in just to kind of give a little bit of an indication. And that's one, 2.618 because of wave, that first wave being so small. Um, but we're going to come here and we're going to put this in, take all those away. We can continue to work it. Yeah, it doesn't fit because of the size of that first wave. So I am actually going to remove that drawing. But so, because that would be the comparison, but I think we got to go here. We're not even done with wave three yet. So we can go from here and that's the one I have. So we go to the fifth from inside here to finish the third, then we get a pullback. So once we get up into here, the possibility, then we do a wave uh, that would be intermediate three. We do intermediate fourth uh, wave pullback. And then we still have a fifth. So higher levels are here for a while. But gold has picked up a lot of um, volatility. So the speed and the, and what's getting pushed around is pretty strong. Just want to do a quick view at this dollar index, which see it's just a sideways. It's consolidating. And the consolidation, this tells me that that could have been an ABC down. And now what we're going to do is go up above 107 and that's the next resistance is 107.78 so we're looking at 108 and what's going to happen and so i think going to be interest rate you know it's it's just it's it's kind of very interesting because put it together it's not spelling glorious days are ahead of us it's kind of spelling that we're going to have some very, very rocky, rocky times and some difficult uh, times coming up because this all, the policies that have been put into place will come home to roost. They really will. And until we actually get you know, government functioning the way it should in terms of like, well, you're going to have to tell them, nope, you can't have that break anymore it should have been given it should not have been handed out it should not have lasted and i believe i believe it has until 2025 so they all have term limits to them but the last one the one that was passed during the trump administration is is it uh sunsets 
in 2025 at some point. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay, that's going to be it. And so uh, please kind of be pre be prepared. I think we could have a very rocky start and we could have a very volatile, a very volatile week in front of us. Now, the VIX complete, closed at 21. So it's can if it continues to climb, ah, uh, you know, a lot of things come into play. So we we I think we could have a very very strong week. Uh, thank you very much for your time today. Um, comments I will I will answer. I will attempt to answer as we get them. And the next Elliott Wave update will be on Monday the thirtieth.